this evening or morning, afternoon. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm the community manager for Nomadic Mats. And um, I actually, uh, I'm gonna share my screen now. Uh, let me know, can you guys see that? Cool, thumbs up is good. Uh, cool. So I actually had an intro in here and I cut it because uh, I felt it was a waste of time. Uh, we got a lot to get into, but me in a nutshell, uh, I've been working for Matt for about six years, um, give or take. I wear a lot of different hats uh, with this job, I have a lot of different responsibilities. Um, and so from this job and from my previous jobs, um, I've really had to uh, juggle a lot of responsibilities at the same time, which I'm sure a lot of you can relate to. Um, and so I've developed, I don't wanna say a system, but I've, I've, I've been able to use some tips and strategies to create um, essentially what I would consider a rich life, um, rich with time, definitely uh, not money. Um, so if you guys are looking for more time if you want to get more time out of your day, then that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, we're not going to be talking about like the sexy, cool tips and hacks and any of that stuff. Um, you know, I'm talking today about a holistic approach to time management, which is not sexy or cool. Um, you know, this is the big picture sort of from the ground up. So if you just want a quick fix, download an app and get your life uh, together, uh, that ain't gonna happen, I'm sorry. Uh, but if you want to learn how to sort of take your life apart and sort of build it back up in a way that gives you more time, more control uh, and more freedom, uh, then that's what uh, I can help you with. Um, so let's, uh, let's just jump into it. The first thing I want to say before we even get into the nitty gritty is, is that, and you guys have probably seen this online, but there's this constant sort of grind, this hustle mentality that we all need to be sort of getting the most out of every minute of every day. Um, and if you're not, if you're not grinding, if you're not hustling, if you don't have 87 side hustles, if you're not making a passive income, if, you know, then you're wasting your time, your life. If you're procrastinating, then you're a bad person. That's garbage. Um, I love productivity. I love being efficient. Uh, I hate procrastination, but none of this is tied to you as a human being. So don't beat yourself up if you're struggling or if you go to implement some of these and they don't quite work out for you. Um, you know, you're lovely regardless of how productive you are, um, but you can probably be more productive. So let's jump into that. When I talk about, um, time management, productivity, whatever, whatever word you want to say. Um, I look at it as being sort of built on three pillars, discipline, focus, and then the habits that you have. Now, regardless of what your, I'll say time goal is, if you want more time for school, more time for sleep, more time with your kids, more time to read or write or learn a language, play guitar, whatever whatever your time goal is, you're gonna to need to create habits to incorporate that into your life. Habits are gonna sort of require you to be disciplined and focus. And being disciplined and focus are also habits. So this is kind of like a feedback loop or a catch 22, depending on how you look at it. Um, but these are the building blocks of what I consider lifestyle design, right? Because I'm not just talking about getting a few extra minutes out of your day, right? Like if you want more time out of your day, I could like lift weights right now while I'm talking to you and that would be productive. Or like I could learn how to speed read so I could read more. Sure, those work, but they don't get to the root of the problem. And that's what I'm gonna to try to tackle today. So keep this in mind that when it comes to redesigning your life, when it comes to building better habits so you can have more time and more freedom and, and more control. Um, these are the three pillars that you're going to need to work on, um, uh, which sounds intimidating, but it's much easier than you think. And I'm gonna break that down for you in, in sort of a step-by-step -step process. So you have a blueprint to redesign your life in a more um, time abundant way. 
So the way that I want you folks to think about this is the same that you would, in the same way that you would think about developing muscle or, or running a marathon. You know, I'm not just going to get up and go run a marathon right now. I've actually done that. Uh, I ran a half marathon with no training and it was horrible. And you can all understand why, because we understand that if you want to lift 500 pounds or run 20 kilometers, you need to start small. You run a little bit this week, you take some breaks, you run a little bit longer next week, you take some breaks and there's a process. And maybe if you're lucky in six months, you can run a half marathon or a marathon, but it's, it's not just something you do, right? You have to build habits. You have to embrace discipline and focus, and you have to take baby steps along the way. You start from where you're at and you go until you're done. Um, so that's, that's the mindset I want you to take with you as we, as we go through this. Developing your focus and your discipline, creating habits, these are a process. And you have to start small and you have to be consistent, right? If you try to train for a marathon, but you train for a month and take one month off, then you're, you're going to be back at square one, right? So consistency is key. Small baby steps is the name of the game. Not so intimidating, right? Uh, unfortunately, uh, you all have an enemy, uh, and that enemy uh, is called context switching, or you know what we used to sort of call uh, multitasking. And I bet some of you, I don't have, I can't see the like the, your cameras right now, but I bet some of you have done it. And it goes a little something like this: you're in the middle of doing something. I'm just going to check my phone for a sec, and then you go back to doing what you're doing. And just that right there, the three seconds is shooting yourself in the foot. Um, studies have shown that people are dumber, like demonstrably dumber when their phone is near them. Not when they're on their phone, just setting it down beside you, you become a dumber person. There are studies that show this. Um, and so when you're multitasking, when you're context switching, when you're doing one thing, say I'm studying a language or writing a blog post or whatever my time goal is, and I pick up my phone for a few seconds. I'm, you know, I'm not doing anything serious. I just check an Instagram notification. I sit down. You've just shot your discipline and your focus. You've started building a bad habit. And not just that, but you're replacing good habits with bad habits. So no more multitasking. That's not a good skill. That's the opposite of good. You want single skill focus. Do one thing, then move on. Uh, that's sort of going to be your guiding principle, one thing at a time. Because when you do that, that's when you build your focus muscle, your discipline muscle. That's when you start to build those into habits. And once those are habits, you can create new habits and design your lifestyle in a more meaningful way. So ditch the content switching. That doesn't mean you can't use your phone ever, but you have to be more intentional about it. And I'll talk about that uh, soon. So step one. We're all juggling uh, a bunch of different balls in our life, right? Friends, family, work, hobbies, your health, even sort of micro balls within each of those. Should have came up with a better title. Um, what I want you to think about before we get into the step-by-step -step process is this is sort of like a framework you can use to think about your priorities when you're building your, when you're redesigning your life. Uh, and I stole this from someone uh, but I think it's really, um, really helpful is that some of the responsibilities, some of the things you're juggling in your life are glass and some are rubber, which means if you drop the ball, some balls will break and some will bounce. So it's up to you to sort of spend some time thinking about all the priorities you have in your life, all the things you're juggling, uh, which one of those can be dropped and which one of those can't. Uh, and that's going to depend on you and your priorities. Um, but um, keep that in mind as, as we go through this. Um, some responsibilities are more important than others, um, obviously, um, but it's up to you to decide which is which for your life. So once you've, you know, in theory, once you've thought about that, uh, then we can move on to the sexy stuff. Um, this is the least fun part of the process. It is the most mandatory part of the process. Um, and what you're going to need to do is for at least a week, ideally two, take a notebook with you wherever you go 
and write down everything you do. Everything you do. When do you wake up? Write it down. How long do you spend getting ready? Write it down. How long is your shower or your bath? Are you commuting? What do you do on your commute? How much time are you on your phone? How many movies, TV shows do you watch a week? Do you have to drive your kid to soccer on the weekends? Do you take, you know, do you play intramural Quidditch or take chess lessons? Anything like that. Whatever you're doing, you're going to write it down in your book every day in 15 minute in increments. It's horrible. It's so horrible and frustrating. Uh, but it's sort of the foundation that you're going to build upon. And the reason for this, and it, it does make sense, uh, is that in order to make informed decisions, you need information, you need data, right? Every business from Amazon and Google all the way down to your local mom and pop pizza shop needs data to make decisions. And so writing all this stuff down, that's the data you're going to use to make decisions. You know, we can say, we can guess, you know, we can all guess, oh, I maybe watch two hours of Netflix a week. No, you don't. You watch more than that. You're going to lie to yourself to make yourself feel better. I do it all the time. You probably do it all the time. We can't trust ourselves. Uh, we are our own worst enemy. And so this is why we need to create a system that relies on data and not our own opinion. Because yeah, I can tell you how long I work out every week, but if I timed it, I bet you it would be less. I can tell you how much time I'm on social media every week, but if I looked at the data, I bet it would be more. Uh, so don't trust yourself, folks. Get hard data. It ain't gonna lie to you and it ain't gonna be pretty, I bet. So once you've done that, then you can sort of ask yourself these two questions. How much free time do you have? You've analyzed all the data and you can look at it. Maybe you've got a couple hours on the weekend Maybe you've got you know, a few hours in the evening after the kids go to bed, whatever. You'll have some free time, hopefully. Uh, and if not, um, there's probably things you can cut from your schedule, things you can, you know, balls you can drop, so to speak. Excuse me. Um, Netflix, social media would be the sort of the obvious low hanging fruit, but we'll all have, our, have some things we can drop. Maybe a bit less so now that we've been in lockdown, but you know, before lockdown, when you were going out, maybe too much every week or, or that sort of thing. So there's probably some things you can cut. So what you're gonna do with this data is you're gonna build your ideal schedule. Uh, it's gonna be ideal in the sense that it's not always gonna work. There's gonna be interruptions. There's gonna be unexpected things, birthdays, weddings, appointments, my cat coming in to jump on my keyboard and I have to go away for 10 minutes while she takes over my desk, whatever it is but you're gonna build your ideal schedule. So here's the sort of like my general schedule at a glance. I work from home, I work seven days a week. I have the same schedule every day, both before and to be honest, before COVID and during COVID, yours will be different. Maybe you'll have one for Monday that will be different from Tuesday, maybe Wednesday and Thursday are the same, but Friday's different, whatever. You're gonna create something like this that reflects the data things you have to do, like I have to work, I have to walk the dog, you know, I have to eat. Uh, but then you're also gonna plug in your time goals. So for me, every evening I write. Uh, every day I play some online chess to sort of de-stress. I exercise, you know, take meditation breaks, I read. Those are my time goals, you know. Um, you'll, yours will be different. Maybe you're learning a language. Maybe every night you want to have quality time with your family and play a board game. Maybe you're um, learning an instrument or you want to read a book a week or write a book. Whatever your time goals are, plug them into where you have gaps in your schedule. Um, if it's just 15 minutes a day, half hour a day, that's fine. Plug them in where you can. So when you make this schedule, you're going to be tempted to make it super awesome. Don't do that. Don't, you know, if you watch on average two hours of Netflix a day, don't cut that down to zero because you'll fail. Cut that down to maybe an hour and a half or one hour. If you spend, you know, three hours or four hours a day on your phone, don't cut that down to zero. Cut that down to one hour, two hours. Whatever your time wasting activities are, keep doing them. Just do them less. And the reason for this is we can all create lofty goals. We can all say, oh, I'm gonna start waking up at five every morning and go for a run. Sweet, love it. 
uh, you'll probably do that for a week and then it, maybe it, you'll fall off for a couple of days, but then you'll get back, but then you'll maybe fall off. If your goals are too lofty and too ambitious, uh, you won't, it'll be much more difficult to breed those into a habit. So aim low. Mediocre goals are my favorite because you'll hit them. And then you'll get that boost of dopamine that says, good job, let's keep doing this, right? You're, you're training yourself like you would a dog because it works. We're simple animals. So small goals, hit them, you'll get that reward, you'll do it again, and then you'll be building a habit. Habits take roughly four weeks of consistent work to do. So aim small, build up those muscles. Don't just start with a marathon. Start with running to the end of your driveway and go from there. Um, and then spend time every day, uh, even if it's just 10 minutes, working on your time goals, whatever that is. If it's language, writing, music, etc. Every day, work on it a little bit. Um, because that, again, will breed the habits, you know? If your goal is to practice guitar or learn guitar, you know, maybe you have tons of time on the weekend, at least during the week, play some scales, just like five, 10 minutes, just at one point. It keeps your brain wired for that habit and will help you uh, solidify it as a habit so you can then grow it. Um, if you have a lot on your plate, this specifically applies to people with who may be freelancers or bloggers, online creators, but, but anybody can use it really, uh, is uh, Asana. It's a free app you can use. It's online uh, and you can use it to sort of track all kinds of tasks. We use it for projects at work. Uh, because I'm a freelancer here in Sweden, I use it to like keep track of tax stuff. Um, but you can use it for anything. If your time goal is to become a better chef or a baker, you can set recipe goals here. If your goal is to read a book a week, you could outline all your books here that you wanna read. You know, if you're a blogger, this is where you can, or YouTuber, this is where you can keep track of when you write posts, edit posts, collab with people, network, whatever. It's a, it's a good free resource if, if you have a lot on your plate. It won't work for everybody, but it is super helpful. What I do in tandem with this is much simpler. And it's, I just keep everything on sticky notes on my desktop. So I've got a yellow note for my week at a glance, which has everything from work I need to do that day to appointments to when I got to pay credit card bills to whatever. I've got one for uh, specific work projects in blue and then the one in green is miscellaneous stuff. Again, super easy. You can use Asana, you can use sticky notes, you can use what Matt uses and this is just Google Calendar. You know, once you've made your ideal template for your schedule, you need to plug it into your life. You can do that digitally with any of these methods. You can do that on paper, write down your list every week. Uh, it doesn't matter, whatever works for you, but spend time every Sunday uh, and plan out your week. Look at your schedule template, make note of when things change. You know, if we jump back to this, maybe on Wednesday, oh, there's a birthday party or you have a virtual call with your family. Make note of what changes change those things in your schedule, on your calendar, or on your sticky notes, whatever, and outline your week. That way you can always make sure that your time goals are met, that you've scheduled something every day for your time goal. Um, and it gives you a bit, a, a, a deeper sense of control, right? If you can sit there on Sunday for 10 minutes and plan out your whole week, that gives you confidence. Like, yeah, you've got this, you know where your problem days are, you know where you've got extra time, where you've got less time. And that gives you some, some control uh, to help you establish these habits. Now this step won't apply to everybody, um, but it will apply to some people. And I like to mention it because it's important. You know, when you're changing your lifestyle in, in such a drastic way, you know, if you're really serious about your time goal, whether that's starting a blog, YouTube channel, reading a book a week, writing a book, uh, learning a new language, you know, it's something you're passionate about and something that you want to make time for. Communicate that to friends and family. Tell them that, like, hey, I'm doing this thing. It's really important to me. Get them uh, supportive and on board so that they're not distracting you later. Um, this is maybe a bit less of a problem now that there's not in-person events. But if your friends are constantly calling you up, inviting you out, uh, that's going to be more tempting than staying at home, you know, reading Hemingway or playing guitar scales or whatever your time goal is. So get your friends on board early 
so they're supporting you. So they're your cheerleaders. And so they're not distracting you later. Or so they're less likely to distract you. Or so they'll understand if they invite you out and you say, sure, but I'm leaving at 10 p.m. They'll let you leave at 10 p.m. instead of egging you on and trying to get you to have another drink or whatever. So uh, communication is key in certain situations. So um, don't hesitate to embrace that uh, if it makes sense for you. So we're going at a good clip here. Let's take a moment to step back. You've, you've thought about all the priorities you have in your life, all the things you're juggling. You understand that this is a process that we're aiming for small baby steps, that it's about progress, not perfection. You've audited your time. You've taken a look at your life and all of the things you spend time on and waste time on. You've used that data to create an ideal schedule and then every week you employ that schedule, making tweaks where necessary, making sure that you're consistently working towards your time goal. You've communicated to anybody necessary that you're trying to redesign your life, trying to take back some control to find more time to engage with your passions. Great. Now, after a couple months of doing that, it's time to review. You want more data. You can ask yourself how you're doing and you're probably not gonna give an honest reply. Maybe you're struggling, but you'll do better next month. No, you won't. Don't lie to yourself. Get data. Data is what we can all trust. Don't trust yourself. Trust the hard, cold, probably disappointing facts. Um, so Time Doctor is an app. It costs 10 bucks. You can just use it for a month, pay the 10 bucks, and then cancel it. And it will make sure that you're hitting your time goal targets. You know, if your goal is to read a book every week, that means you need to spend X amount of hours reading every day. Time Doctor will time you while you're doing that to make sure you're hitting those goals. If you're working on a blog, you know, say you give yourself three hours every Saturday to write a blog post, but it's turned out you need three and a half. Well, this data, you can, you can use this data to tweak your ideal template. It will also make sure you're not overworking. If that's your problem, if you don't have enough free time because you're constantly going back to work emails, Time Doctor will keep you on task so you aren't doing that. So this is sort of the follow-up to that audit. You've audited yourself and you've been employing that information for a couple months. Now it's time to see how you're doing and to make tweaks using data, not just using uh, how you feel. If you're struggling in particular uh, with procrastination or distraction, going down the rabbit hole of social media, uh, this might be a good app for you. It's called Self Control. Um, I've never used it, but Matt used it when he was writing his book. Uh, so it's a good app. You turn it on, type in whatever websites you keep going back to, and it will block them for a set period of time. So even if you turn off your computer, uh, it will uh, prevent you from blocking, prevent you from going to those sites if, even if you come back online. So if you're struggling in particular with certain sites, this is, it might be a good tool for you. Uh, if, if you're not struggling that much, but maybe struggling a little bit, uh, leave your phone in the other room when you're um, working on your time goal. You know, if your goal is to practice guitar for an hour, you know, don't have your phone here. Uh, just practice. Because if your phone's here, you're going to get distracted. You're going to be context switching, and that's going to fry your progress. You know, if your goal is to spend quality time with your family every evening, leave your phone. Those things can wait. Um, it's, it, this is like your worst enemy and it's always, always with you. So the more physical distance you can put between you and your phone, uh, the more likely it is you will succeed. Sort of uh, going off that, uh, turn off your notifications, as many as you're comfortable with. The only notification I get on here is from work uh, and it just tells me I have a notification. It doesn't even say what the message is. If you call me, I won't get a notification. If you text me, I won't get a notification. No social media, no sound. I don't have an answering machine. Unless you call me multiple times in a row, then I'm not gonna get back to you because it's my time. Time is the most valuable resource we have. You know, uh, I'm not just gonna waste it. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna be proactive when I use my phone and not reactive. You know, if there's an emergency, someone will call back to back. If they just call once, I mean, who's calling anybody? If they just text once, uh, it's probably not an emergency. So as much as you're comfortable with, tone them down and start small. Again, 
you know, maybe just turn off one social media notification. You know, I don't even have, you know, Twitter was an app I use a lot. So I deleted off my phone just to get rid of the problem uh, altogether. So as much as you're comfortable, turn off your notifications. If you've got a particularly messy inbox, excuse me, uh, you can use a service like Unroll Me to unsubscribe from newsletters. Uh, not our <laughs> newsletter, please, but, but everyone else's uh, unsubscribe. You, you don't need them. Uh, it, if, you're, if you're particularly struggling with social media or email, set aside time to, to do those in your template. If social media is a problem for you, uh, accept that you're going to use it and schedule time every day. You know, that's what Matt does. Matt will build in social media time into his calendar so he can sit there, waste time on social media and not feel bad about it um, because, it's, because it's built into your day. Same with checking email. Don't check your email and read your email every time one pops up. Check them in the morning, check them in the evening. That's it. If there's, if there's an emergency, someone will phone you. Uh, so, so stop reacting and be proactive. And that will free up a lot of, just a lot of like psychological space in your head, um, uh, which is worth it. Um, also, and this won't apply to everybody and it will also apply to people differently, but learn to say no. Um, your time is valuable, right? Time is much more valuable than money. So you need to guard that, right? That's your sort of wealth, that's your freedom. That's your lifestyle that you're creating. So learn to say no when, it, when you feel you need to. Um, you know, you're, you're working hard to sort of collect and, and rope this time together so you can use it and cherish it. So don't let, every, don't let anybody walk over that. Uh, there's also, and I won't get into this today, but there's um, work strategies you can use uh, to help you sort of, these are more sort of surface level, what I would call tactics you could use to get more out of your day, it's probably your work, uh, but it could apply to your time goals as well. Things like the 80-20 rule, smart goals, you know, you can Google these, there's books on them as well. Uh, but there are sort of tactics like this that they don't go super deep, but they can help you sort of squeeze out more time uh, from certain tasks. Um, if you're doing something particularly creative, like learning an instrument or a language or trying to read more, starting a blog, something like that, find accountability partners. These are people who are doing something similar, who are at your level, who you can check in with every week or every month to, to vent, to complain, to get inspiration from, to inspire one another to keep going. Um, especially in lockdown, we're doing a lot of things alone. Uh, and you know, that's okay for some people, you know, I'm an introvert, um, I'm doing perfectly fine. Uh, but if you miss that sort of companionship and doing things with other people, join an accountability group or find a partner who can help keep you on track and help keep you sort of moving in the right direction with your time goals and whatever sort of project you're working on. Um, if you can, and this won't apply to everybody, but try to work consistent hours. So if you remember from my schedule, uh, I do all my writing in the evening, you know, um, unless there's something that comes up and I feel like it in the afternoon, I always do my writing in the evening when everything's done. And so my brain, you know, because we're animals, I've sort of trained my brain that, oh, when I have my tea and sit down in the evening and put on this playlist, it's time to write and be creative. And so because I've consistently done that, um, it helps those habits get embedded. So whether that's like, waking up and the first thing you do is yoga or meditation or go for a jog, whatever, you know, if you can do it at the same time, uh, that's uh, going to give you a leg up when it comes to solidifying these uh, actions as habits. Not everyone can do it, but if you can, I recommend it. And last and probably least are more apps uh, that can help you. These are again, more surface level. They, these aren't going to make a lasting difference, but they're important tools that might work for you. Uh, rescue time and remember the milk are sort of productivity, kind of like a sauna um, apps you can use to help keep you on track. So if you know, I don't, I don't like having like apps and stuff on my phone that like I check in with, but if you do, uh, uh, they might work for you. And most importantly, uh, and I can't stress this enough, is you need to bring balance into this new lifestyle you're designing. If we were 
um, running a marathon, we couldn't train every day. It wouldn't be run, 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 run. It would be run, rest for a day or two, run, rest. If you're lifting weights, you can't just like pump it every single day. You need that time for your muscles to rest. The same goes for you as a creative entity. You need to build that rest into your schedule. And this will look different for everybody. You know, for me, I need to exercise, write, read, and meditate just to like stay sane. That's like my baseline. Yours will be different, uh, but try to get away from the computer. Try to get moving. It could be playing board games. It could be, you know, writing, could be playing music or just like laying down and listening to music. Whatever it is for you, build it into your schedule. Don't just do it when you have time. Consciously put it into your day. So it's a part of your day, just like work, just like eating. Have your sort of your meaningful procrastination, as I call it, built into your day because it's infinitely more important than most of us realize. Uh, it will keep you calm. It will keep you refreshed and will help you. It will make you better at whatever your time goal is if you're rested and recovered uh, and, and you know, bringing your best self to, to the game. I can't stress this enough. If there's only one thing you take from this talk, it's this. Build meaningful, healthy procrastination into your day and it will uh, pay dividends for the rest of your life. And then books. Um, there are tons of books out there uh, that um, I found helpful, that you will probably, found help, you'll probably find helpful. Uh, here's a few of them. Uh, Atomic Habits is a really great book on sort of the, the process of building habits uh, for like a uh, sort of a practical guide to using your phone less. Digital minimalism is a really good uh, challenging breakdown of like how to use your phone less. If you just need like a, a creative pep talk, uh, Big Magic is really great. I read that recently and it really just uh, rekindled my sort of creative spirit. Um, so these are all great books. Again, these aren't going to drastically change everything for you, but they'll give you insight. And these are tools you can use to help sort of chisel your uh, new lifestyle, your time abundant lifestyle. So add them to your arsenal and employ them uh, when you can. So let's review. We've covered a lot and I've, I've tried to cram it all in. Uh, you'll get these slides if you want them. My email's at the end so you can have these and go through it on your own time. But let's review. We start with the audit. Unfun, unsexy, super important. Get that data. You need that information. Once you have that, you can create your ideal schedule. You're going to create a template and you're going to aim low. You're still going to make sure you waste time, just not as much time as you're wasting now. Aim small, progress, not perfection. You're going to ditch context switching. You're going to get this thing the heck out of here when you're working. You're going to do one thing at a time and one thing only. Uh, no more multitasking. That's done. You'll communicate your plans when and where necessary. You'll check in and evaluate your progress with Time Doctor to get more data because you can't trust yourself. You and me alike, we're lazy. We want to chill out. We don't want to work. Uh, watching Netflix is way easier than learning a language or playing guitar or whatever. So, you know, acknowledge that you're your own worst enemy and get that data. Evaluate your progress using Time Doctor or something similar. And then don't hesitate to use helpful apps. Um, you know, I think of apps uh, and these sort of external things in the same way I would as a marathon runner would think of um, like those little water bottles or like a fancy watch to track your time. Not 100% necessary, but they can definitely improve your experience. You know, so, so these apps, uh, things like Asana, self-control, uh, embrace them if they work for you. Again, they aren't super necessary, but they can really make your whole experience much smoother and give you better results. And then aim for balance. Meaningful procrastination is the name of the game. Get outside, get away from your computer, leave this thing at home. Uh, whatever you're doing, uh, be conscious of it, be mindful of it and, and embed it into your schedule so it's a part of your day, just like eating, excuse me, just like working, just like taking your kids to school, whatever. This is important for you. Excuse me. And last but not least, or maybe least, it's hard to say, 
uh, read books to learn new tactics and strategies. These are important tools that you can use in different situations. So don't hesitate to uh, invest some time and effort into books that can really um, give you a lot of wisdom. So key points, this is a process. This is your marathon. There's no willpower, no willpower switch you can flip to, to fix everything. You need to invest in yourself and acknowledge that this is a process, that becoming more focused, becoming more disciplined, those are skills. They aren't just things you do. Those are skills, just like any other skill uh, from hacky sack to learning guitar, you need to spend time doing it. <clears throat> and you need to be consistent, right? If your time goal is to uh, learn guitar, but you only practice you know, for half an hour a week, you're not gonna get far. You need that consistency to build habits. Consistent progress is what creates a habit, at least four weeks of daily effort, at least. So, so make sure that you've built consistency into your ideal schedule. And then aim low, super low. Get that bar as low as you can go, folks. Any victory is, is going to help you. So, you know, if your goal is to learn a language, you know, set your, you know, you're using Duolingo, okay, five minutes a day, like that's bare minimum. Don't aim for like an hour a day. Don't say I'm going to be fluent by the end of the year. Aim super small. The smaller, the better. And then once you hit that, move up from there. We're building muscle here. You don't just pick up a 200 pound weight. You start with those five pound weights and you go. And eventually you'll get to where you're going. So aim low. It's all about progress, baby steps, not perfection. And remember that the more detailed you make your schedule, the more likely you will succeed. And that's why I always say, if you can on a Sunday, sit down and map out your week, add in the details you want. If your time goal is starting a blog, don't just say, oh, on Monday, I'll spend an hour working on my blog. No, what are you gonna do? For one hour, you're gonna write a post. On Tuesday, for one hour, you're gonna edit that post. For Wednesday, for one hour, you'll post it and share it on social media. Be specific with what you're doing. You know, if, you, if your goal is to learn how to bake, don't just say, oh, on the weekend, I'm gonna bake. What are you gonna bake? From this time to this time, what are you gonna bake? Make note of the, you know, do you need to go shopping? When are you going to go shopping? What do you need to buy? Be specific. The devil is in the details, folks. Um, and it will trip you up if you aren't paying attention. And last, and definitely not least, is, is remember that time is your most valuable resource. Uh, I'm confident if all of us lost our jobs today, we could have a job by next week. It may not be a high paying job. It may not be a job you like but you can all make more money. Money comes and goes. We ain't getting any younger, folks. Uh, time is your most valuable resource. So if, you're, if you can, invest in creating habits that give you more of it uh, because that freedom is, is gonna create or help you create a much more enjoyable lifestyle. And we all have different time goals. Doesn't matter what your time goals are, but if you can create more time, you can enjoy it more. And that's, in my opinion, uh, why we're all here. So we'll end on this. What can you do today to start this process? You know, again, this isn't a marathon. You aren't gonna just start by cutting out everything tomorrow. You're not gonna wake up at five in the morning and start doing push-ups or whatever. No, screw that. What reasonable things can you do today? Maybe you can start a time edit or maybe you just, or order a journal because you don't even have a journal. Aim small, remember. Maybe you just outline or spend some time thinking about all the things you're juggling, what you can maybe drop. Maybe you start thinking about how, what, time, what are your time goals? What do you want more time for? What are you missing in your life that you want to spend more time for? Even just thinking about that and making a list, that's something. But start today because this is your marathon. And the sooner you can start, the sooner you can get uh, closer to that finish line. So that is it for me. Uh, how long? 44 minutes. I thought it would take 40. Great. Sorry for those four extra minutes. I'll do better next time. Uh, here's where you can find me online. I'll happily send these slides to anybody who emails me. Uh, you can find me on social if you have uh, additional questions that we don't get to today, but I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Cool. And, uh, 
I'll hand things off. Uh, where is it? Me. <laughs> cool. There you are. I was like going through the trying to find. Oh, it. yeah. No, totally cool. Wow. Um, what an incredible presentation. And I wish you could see the chat because everyone was just piling on, offering their advice, what apps and programs they use as well. So, um, hot tip for anyone who wants to know apps, books, how to contact Chris in the chat. If you are on desktop in the Zoom chat, you can hit the three dots at the bottom right hand corner and it will save the chat to a Zoom folder on your computer. That's like one of my favorite Zoom tips. Oh, and then you can know. connect with everyone in the chat as well because some people have their Instagram handles, social media handles. Um, and then Stephanie so graciously in the chat also put the books that Chris recommended on that one slide. And I dropped in Chris's contact info as well because I'm sure you'll be getting a lot of questions in addition to the questions that came through. <laughs> totally, yeah. So nice. let's start with the first one. Um, Let's see. It's from Anukrati. How to take time, how to take out time to soak in the place about which you're going to blog. This one's about blogging. So sometimes you become so engrossed in like photos, videos that you hardly get time to really absorb the place and its vibe. Um, that makes sense. You know, some people are caught up in doing things for social media rather than like being present in the moment of where they are. So this is really about like, you know, travel blogging. Yeah, so so I take a page from Matt in that, and and when Matt is traveling, uh, he doesn't, he's not working. When he's traveling, he's just traveling. He's enjoying those experiences. Maybe he's taking notes or taking pictures of like things he's going to write about, maybe prices or like uh, you know sites stuff like that. Uh, but when Matt's working, he isn't uh, blogging. He'll set aside days for that where he just sits down and works. But generally when he's traveling, traveling, he'll travel, really soak in those experiences. And then when he gets home, he'll process it and turn that into content. So that goes back to like doing one thing at a time, like really focus on what you're doing. Now, of course, you'll need to take some pictures for Instagram and, and whatever, but um, really try to focus on one thing at a time. If you're taking pictures for Instagram, sort of think about that like okay this morning i'm going to go around take pictures for instagram and then in the afternoon i'm just going to relax and do you know go to this museum or do this whatever but like be conscious of how you're spending your time even when you're traveling yes that's super helpful i think even when i go visit say like a monument or um like for example i was in chichen itza last october i'm like okay first 10 minutes i'm going to take pictures of the signs that have prices everything that I want to make into a blog post an Instagram post, et cetera, or whatever. And then I'm going to do that for 10 minutes, but the rest of my three hours here are dedicated to exploring and being off my phone. So I very exactly. much dedicate. I'm like, I know, I know, and I tell everyone, I'm like, Hey, I'm going to do 10 minutes of what the, the content I need to capture. But after that, I'm free. Totally. So be about being very like disciplined and intentional, just like you said, Matt does. So um actually i have a question now about discipline so i used to think that i needed motivation and then someone said actually you don't you need discipline so do you have tips on how to like hone into how to be more disciplined about things yeah because because motivation uh, like passion will come and go right and there'll be waves you can ride when you're really on it and in the groove and then there's days where you get sort of creative writer's blog and just aren't feeling it but here's the thing, like, if you have a nine to five job, uh, if, if you aren't in the mood to go to work, you still got to go to work, right? Like, you, that's the way it is. You don't just like, I don't feel motivated today, boss, I'm going to stay home. That's not going to fly. So you have, you know, we're our own boss when it comes to these sort of creative endeavors. And so that's why it's about starting small. So if, even if, you know, um, like I've, I've been working on a book, and some days just I'm not feeling creative enough to like write. So I'll just go back and like read and maybe edit. And that's at least something, right? It's baby steps. So, you know, if you're a blogger and you're, and you're not feeling like writing, what else can you do? Maybe you can edit an older post. Maybe you can just post on social media or, or you know, maybe tweak some design. Like find something you can do if you're not passionate because even that is helping embed that consistent behavior. 
uh, that like I work on my blog. Sure, I might not be writing, but I'm going to do other stuff. You know, um, if your if your thing is like guitar and you're not really feeling it, just listen to guitar. Like watch YouTube videos of other guitar players playing, and at least that's something to sort of keep you in that headspace. Um, but again, yeah, I mean, being disciplined. In order to be disciplined, you have to start being disciplined, right? Like it's it's a muscle, so you have to just start small. And the smaller you can start, uh, the better. Um, you know, I have, a, you know, I I lived at a monastery for uh, six months, and so in that sort of environment, you really hone those skills. Um, and so, you know, obviously, I'm not saying everyone has to move to a monastery, but that sort of monastic discipline. Uh, is what you're looking to sort of channel when it comes to your creative endeavors. That is incredible advice. And I like that a lot um, because even if you're blogging, but you're like adjusting pictures or putting in alt text, whatever, that will still get you closer to your overall goal of like having your blog done, which okay. is great. So if you're trying to get back on your health, your fitness, but you don't want to go lift weights for an hour go on a 20 minute walk because that's still movement. That's still going towards your health goals. So thank you for that, Chris. And yeah, Steph just dropped the, um, all of the books that Chris recommended in the chat again. All right, we got some great questions um, to go through. So Christine wants to know how to best structure your ideal schedule taking into account energy levels. Any t ideas on what types of tasks to do when? Christine struggles with using highly energetic time for work when she would rather dedicate it to her personal goals. That's an yeah. interesting one. Totally, yeah. And so, I mean, energy, your energy levels is kind of like motivation in the sense that it will ebb and flow. Um, so um, one thing that you can, and this won't apply to everyone, but like, I know when my energy levels drop and they almost drop at the same time every day. And that's when I know I have to change my diet. Every day at 3 p.m. I get tired. That means I need, you know, I haven't been, I've been eating too much junk food usually. Um, so you, it's part of this lifestyle design is paying attention to yourself and seeing like what, what, what's causing these lack of energy levels. Is it something you can change? Is it something involving sleep or diet or exercise? Or is it just like, you've got kids running around and there's nothing you can do. Um, but you can change your ideal template around to, as, as much as you need to, you know, I have exercise put in at a certain time, but if it's raining, I'll change that. You know, if I walk my dog at different times in the winter than the summer, like little things like that, you can move around when it comes to work. Uh, it will depend on your job. Like some jobs aren't flexible. You know, if you've got a nine to five and you have to sit there from nine to five, there's nothing you can do, but maybe you can ask your boss if, you know, if you know when these sort of creative slumps come, if you can work different hours or if you can change your schedule. Um, but I would try to get to the root of the problem and what are these slumps coming from? You know, obviously you can just keep drinking caffeine, but that's not a solution. Uh, so there's probably a root cause, which I'm not qualified to, to get into. Um, but, you know, one thing I will say is you know, I get at least eight hours sleep every night. Like that's high on my time goal. Like I would rather get a good night's sleep than like do a creative project. So when it comes to like your health and, and sort of your diet and sleeping, like those are vital. You can't be creative if you're constantly tired or, or like sleepy because you're not living, you know, because you're, you're not as healthy as you could be. So like, and I'm not saying that's the case, but I'm just saying for everyone, like keep in mind that like getting a good sleep is uh, part of this process, right? That's a good habit you wanna have. Um, but yeah, in regards to energy levels, um, I guess that there's too many sort of um, specifics there that I don't know, but if you wanna email me and give me a bigger breakdown, we can talk it out and I'll see if I have anything helpful. Awesome, yeah. Christine, you can, uh, you can go ahead and email, email Chris for more, <laughs> for, to hash out more of what you need. So a question from Scott, what are some of your activities, for example, work or exercise that change seasonally? Can you still succeed with, you know, the time management schedule you have for yourself? Do you, or and do you edit your schedule every so often? Yeah, so my schedule does change seasonally. Um, 
oh, but only minimally. I mean, I have the luxury of working from home, uh, but um, yeah, like when it's like in Sweden in the winter, it's super dark all the time. Uh, the sun isn't up till after nine. So like my morning activities change. Like I'm not going to walk the dog when it's pitch black. I'm not going to exercise outside when it's cold. So that's sort of uh, one of those sort of re-evaluations, you know, you do on like a Sunday where you look at not just your schedule, but like the weather, what's coming up. Like, am I going to have to change any of my plans for inclement weather, depending on what your thing is, right? If your time goal is to run every day, the weather's going to affect that. So you need to be mindful of that. Um, but um, yeah, changing things seasonally is, is perfectly okay. As long as you're basing these changes on like data you have about, about your lifestyle, you know, if your work schedule changes seasonally, um, then, then that's totally fine. Right. Right. Um, okay. Bethany um, wants to know, how do you handle if you go over, for example, Bethany budgets 10 minutes to practice piano, but ends up wanting to play for 30 minutes. Does that come out of the allowed wasted time? Yeah, so so that's that's great. That's awesome. If you are have a time goal and when you hit that, if you've hit that goal and you want to keep playing, go for it. Ride that wave because there are going to be other days when you look at your clock and it's been four minutes and you're just like, is this over yet? Uh, so when you're, when you're in those zones, when you're like really feeling it, stick with it because that really helps solidify uh, the habit, right? You're going to get a, a good kick from that being like, yeah, this is great. I'm loving it. Um, and that will sort of counterbalance those times when you're trying to learn something new and it's super frustrating and you want to smash the whole thing. Um, so definitely go for it. As long as it isn't like impacting, you know, like, you know, you're not like forgetting your kids at school because you're like rocking out or something. But definitely, whenever you have those like uh, sort of motivated periods, those passionate periods, embrace them, ride them out because they're sometimes they're few and far between. Uh, so enjoy them when you can. All right. Yep. And, you know, it's like doing something that'll make you more happy as well and might give you energy for other tasks that you have upcoming. So totally. So Monica wants to know how many projects do you want, uh, how many projects do you recommend working on per month and per quarter? These are goals such uh, as everything that is including, everything that is, in, these are goals that are everything that, sorry, includes growing a blog and growing an art practice. Right, so I, I if you're new to either of those, I wouldn't set quarterly goals. I wouldn't be like, I wanna you know, have this much done at this period. I would set much smaller goals you know, just do it week to week, you know, it does, like when your blog launches or when you have these posts up, doesn't matter, set small goals, go week to week. And that way you can tweak easily. And that way you're not overwhelmed by like, oh, I need to like, I need to paint this many pictures by the end of the quarter. I need to like have 20 blog posts out. Like that's not, when it comes to creative tasks, setting like uh, goals in that regard isn't, always the best. So I would set non hard, non specific goals, like, you know, I want to have, I want my blog to be, I want to improve my blog by the end of this quarter. And then every week set goals. So this week, I'm going to focus on writing this many posts this week, so I'm going to focus on writing this many posts and editing. So break it down into much smaller chunks. Um, and then for something like art, like painting or drawing, I mean, just do it every day. That's the only goal I would set do it every day. What happens, what comes from that is up to you. How long you spend is up to you. Uh, but for creative practices, from music to art, language, whatever, just set some time aside every day. And beyond that, um, you know, we all have our own preferences and stuff, but uh, consistent daily work is, we'll just bring the best results. Right. All right. I know we're coming up on time here, so I want to be conscious of yours. One more great question from Mark and Arlene, and then we'll close it out. So how do you re react and adapt when things inevitably come up in life that aren't expected and impact the detailed schedule you've made for yourself? Yeah, so that's inevitable, right? Um, you know, th there's a saying, when we make plans, God laughs. Um, and so this, temp this schedule is your template. It's like your fallback position. If everything is going right, this is what you follow, but things, ain't always going to go right. So 
that's why I don't recommend having these big lofty goals because you're going to get derailed. If you go week to week, derailing one week isn't going to, isn't going to ruin much, right? But if you have this whole goal where every week is stacked and you, and you need to hit every goal after one after another, uh, that's going to cause stress. So um, things, bad things are going to happen. Like that's, as if there's anything we've learned in the past year, is that, um, you know, our schedules are at the whims of forces far greater than us. Uh, so we just have to ride the waves and do our best. Uh, and a great book, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Big Magic sort of talks about that. I really I high, highly recommend it. It's a great sort of creative pep talk. Uh, and it, it sort of talks about these sort of, um, you know, things beyond our control that we just have to, you know, roll with the punches and do our best. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Chris. This was incredibly helpful. And I guarantee you everyone is walking away from this Zoom presentation with at least three hot tips or apps or time management uh, programs they can use, especially all your books, you know, head to bookshop.org to uh, order those. So thank you so much again. And everyone, I dropped Chris's information in the chat once more so you can connect with him if you have any other questions, if we didn't get your question answered today. So with that being said, I'm just gonna close out to the, um, presentation. I'll share my screen one last time. All right. So like I was saying earlier, if you found this presentation and some of the others that you've been attending helpful, we invite you to become a Patreon community member. And it is an exclusive program where you can support um, Nomadic Math, the Nomadic Network, and all the content that uh, we put out, you get a big say in, in, you know, the community and deciding what content goes out there. You get event replays if you've missed any, um, including this one, uh, live Q and A's and free signed books, free guides. So there's different levels. You can just go ahead to patreon.com forward slash nomadic mat to check it out. And you'll see the upcoming events here. Tomorrow we have an event with Rodrigo on Colombia, how to positively impact local communities. Tonight we have the Northeast virtual happy hour. Tomorrow we have Texas happy hour. Um, I'm sure they could use it, the virtual happy hour. And then we have some partner events on Friday coming up. We don't host these, but we promote um, partner events from Impact Travel Alliance and Wonderful as well. So those are Friday. And um, next week we have our book club on the third and uh, following your nose tips on finding food in foreign countries. That's next Tuesday. And more on the book club. Like I said, David Farley's coming down on March 3rd. Him and Matt are going to chat about this book and irreverent curiosity and they're going to answer your questions live. So you can probably go off mute and ask David your questions yourself. It's not too late to get the book and read it. <laughs> so the, the nomadicnetwork.com forward slash events, you can find all of the great upcoming events up until June, we have them scheduled out. So once again, this wouldn't be the same if it was just Chris and I chatting. We thank all of you for being here and being part of the community and coming with your incredible questions. So thank you everyone. Reach out to Chris if you have more and we will see you next time. Hey everybody. Hi all, thank you. <laughs>